Good morning, everybody. At this time, will sergeants please start their recordings? Your recording is on. Thank you. Our recording is on. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you. And Sergeant Bradley, if you'd be able to start with your opening statement. Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council vote of the Committee on Finance. At this time, all panelists turn their videos on. Thank you for your cooperation. You may begin, Chair. Thank you very much and good morning. My name is Council Member Daniel Drum and I'm Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone who's here. Uh, Council Member Koslowitz, Van Bremer, Gibson, Cornegie, Rosenthal, Gordenchik, Adams, Amphrey Samuel, Ayala, Moya, Powers, Lewis, Diaz, Matteo, and uh, council member, our majority leader, Cumbo, is here as well. <coughs> Today, the committee will be voting on one item, proposed intro 2166B. The bill, sponsored by council member Adams by request of the mayor, relates to the city's tax lien sale. The tax lien sale is the city's primary tool to ensure the timely payment of property taxes, water and sewer charges, and certain other municipal charges. Before the lien sale program was introduced, the number of tax delinquent properties averaged 4.4% for the three years that preceded the program. In contrast, in fiscal 2020, approximately 98% of all property owners paid their property taxes in full and on time. This is significant because currently every percentage point of delinquency equates to approximately $300 million in lost revenue for the city, revenue which is used to provide vital services to all New Yorkers. But while the council recognizes that it's important to hold all property owners accountable, we must also strike a balance to ensure that the tax lien sale does not compound the financial dis distress experienced by many homeowners, especially now during these difficult economic times brought on by COVID-19. For the past several months, the council has met with property owners, the administration and community-based organizations to discuss the proposed issues surrounding the tax lien sale process. Proposed intro number 2166B and the additional terms of agreement between the council and the mayor take major steps towards providing deeper protections and resources to homeowners by among other things, one, creating a COVID-19 exemption for calendar year 2021 for property owners who are experiencing a COVID related financial hardship, two, increasing the property tax debt eligibility threshold for class one and co-ops and condos to $5,000 and the water debt eligibility threshold for two and three family homes to $3,000. Three, increasing the income eligibility threshold for the Department of Finance's low income payment and tax deferral plans to $86,400. Four, establishing a lower property tax late payment interest rate for properties with an assessed value between $250,000 and $450,000. Five, mandating additional outreach sessions to be conducted by the administration during the tax lien sale notice period. Six, establishing a temporary task force to ensure that the city's enforcement of delinquent municipal charges is fair, effective, and efficient, and to study the feasibility of transferring properties with liens to community land trusts, land banks, mutual housing associations, or other similar entities, and seven, providing $1 million in discretionary funding for CBOs to do lien sale related outreach. As we continue to make steady progress in reforming the tax lien sale program, the council members, the council remains committed to work with property owners and community-based partners and advocates for deeper reforms in order to blunt the negative impacts it has had on our communities. I'll now turn it over to council member Adams for her remarks and congratulations, Council Member Adams. You've done a tremendous amount of work on this and this is a very good piece of legislation. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Chair Drum. Thank you for allowing me to deliver remarks about legislation that is an important step forward 
in how we handle the collection of unpaid property taxes and water bills. It is imperative to correct the injustices caused by the previous lean cell program and the Giuliani S work that has been to get us here. We've moved delinquent water, repair, and other municipal debt collection processes to a much more equitable place in this bill. We have reduced the length of authorization to just one year, and we've added $1 million in outreach contracts for community-based organizations. Fiscal year 21 and continuing through fiscal year 22, we've secured substantial wins since the first iteration of our bill in December and created a robust framework to enhance this vital reform. These are major steps that will protect vulnerable low-income households in the 2021 lien sale and pave the way for a substantial rethinking and replacement of the lien sale in the future. I wanna thank the speaker for his indulgence to make sure that we get this legislation right for communities like mine, the most affected to lose their homes to the lien sale and foreclosure. And I certainly would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the hard work of the advocates that helped us get to this point and the Attorney General, James, for her insight. I also want to thank our finance staff, Rebecca Chasen, Ray Majewski, Emra Adev, and of course, our Olivia Pope as Council Member Gibson calls her so eloquently, Latanya McKinney. I'd also like to thank our administration partners, Paul Ochoa, and I'd like to thank my Director of Legislative Affairs, Stacey Yearwood, for all of your long nights, your hard work, and your dedication to this mission. We've come a long way, and I ask for the support of my colleagues on intro 2166B. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions on the bill on today's agenda? Okay, if not, I'm going to ask Billy Martin, uh, committee clerk, to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, will call vote committee on finance, tongue tied. Uh, all items are coupled. One item introduction 2166B, Chair Drop. Aye. Kozlowitz. <laughs> Councilmember Kozlowitz. Aye. Uh, Thank you. Van Bramer. No. Gibson. Permission to explain? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair Drum, and good morning, colleagues. Um, I want to speak up in support of this legislation. I know the tremendous amount of work that our colleague, Councilmember Adams, has done. And I also know we received a lot of input from our Attorney General, Letitia James, as well as a lot of advocacy groups that had reached out to us when this bill was first put on the agenda last year. Um, I'm especially pleased that there is discretionary money uh, that will be allocated to many of our community organizations on the ground who have the ability to provide a significant amount of outreach to many of our property owners. I think in light of a global pandemic, we have to be mindful of the reality of what we're facing, but we also have to provide the support that many of our property owners need, particularly those hardest hit by the pandemic that lost revenue and lost income, and many of whom are owners of color. We always talk about communities hardest hit by COVID-19, and I think we have to recognize that in this uh, day, we have to provide the support needed on the ground. So I really want to thank the advocates that have reached out to our office since then to try to make this bill better and enhance it and really provide the critical support for all of our property owners across the city of New York. So thank you again, Chair Adams. Great work to all the advocates. Thank you. A uh, great step forward today. And I vote aye on today's agenda. Thank you. Carnegie. Mission to explain as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Uh, thank you to the bill sponsor, Adrian Adams. I watched from the sidelines as she grinded this out uh, on behalf of communities like mine and like hers that are the most disproportionately impacted by everything from lean sale to third party transfer to deed theft and deed fraud. 
So I know for a fact that she was incredibly thoughtful. I want to thank the advocates who she listened to, by the way. So this is what it looks like when we work with the advocates yes. and we work together as a council, as a co-equal branch of the administration to get something done, we get it done. I want to thank the finance team who spent countless hours, I am sure, trying to get this bill. There's no such thing as a perfect bill, but this comes pretty damn close. Um, so I vote aye. Thank you. Combo. Okay. <laughs> I vote I. I vote Thank I. Thank you. <laughs> That's Prince. <laughs> Rosenthal. You know, with congratulations to and great admiration of Councilmember Adams, I proudly vote I and will not repeat the very apt um, description of why this is so important, but council members Gibson and Courtney, Cornegy nailed it. Um, so really, really impressive work. I vote aye again. Thank you. Gordenchik. Uh, I vote aye and I wanna congratulate my, uh, my colleague and my dear friend, Adrian Adams. I know that this has not been easy uh, it's a very, very difficult issue for uh, many parts of New York City, uh, especially my community, um, community wards 12 and 13, which have um, some of the highest foreclosure rates in the state of New York. And um, we are working uh, desperately to try to keep people in their houses in this uh, pandemic. And I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Adams for all our hard work here. And I vote aye. Adams. I thank my colleagues for your support and your gracious remarks. I do vote aye. I'm Bree Samuel. Recognizing Councilmember Adams for all your hard work, um, I vote aye. Ayala. I want to congratulate Councilmember Adams for all of the work. Thank you so much. We all appreciate you, uh, Adrian, um, and I vote aye. Moya. Congratulations to Councilmember Adams, uh, who worked tremendously hard. Uh, I know how hard she worked. I would call her on the phone all the time, asking a lot of questions. So I want to thank you so much uh, for all that you've done, and uh, I'll be voting on it. Powers. I would aye. Thanks. Lewis. Congratulations, Councilmember Adams, and congratulations also, and I want to thank the countless advocates who helped push the administration in the right direction to make these changes. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. I guess I'm meant to be muted. I vote aye, <laughs> and as a former advocate, thank you because this allows me to find out the why the 37 councilmatic district continues to be the top at the list. Again, I vote aye and, and thank you for the extra push. Thank you. Mario. I vote aye. Council member Cumbo, did you wanna edit your vote? I see your hands raised. No, no, that's Prince raising his hand. Okay, no problem. Hold, I'm waving back. Hello. All right. By a vote of 15 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, introduction 2166B has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Hey, I want to thank you very much. And uh, with that, this meeting is adjourned at 923 in the morning. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>